Uh, this is Mark Donovan, Director of Commercial Applications for Audio Technica US. Uh, today, going to talk a little bit more uh, about System 20 Pro, get a little bit under the hood on that one. So, uh, if you wa had a chance to watch the overview video, I did kind of talk about how there was a whole lot more going on with System 20 Pro than its predecessor. Um, we've got a lot of processing that's under the hood here inside of this receiver chassis, and I wanted to take a chance to go through that today. Now, there is a lot that you can do from the front panel. So, you've got your dial. And you've got a very nice display here so th there's quite a bit that you can control from that but to make it a lot easier actually you could use our software so our wireless manager software which is free can be downloaded off of our website can connect directly to this and it just makes it a whole lot easier to make adjustments and set up and things like that and actually I'm going to show you some of those features some of that DSP that's under the hood using the wireless manager software now the software here on the screen, this is, uh, it's already lit off. Um, you know, when, when you have your devices plugged into the same network you're running this software on, you know, those devices are going to pop up automatically and you just pull them into the project. And this is our, our project that we have here uh, for these four microphones that are running. And you can see it. You can see I've got my charger. You can see I've got the receiver here. And you can see that the transmitters are all paired to it. And that's fine and good for setting up. Of course, that makes life a little bit easier because you can name them and do things like that. But where the real power is here is in the setup. So hitting on the wheel here. Now you see the obvious, the system one, your device name, things like that. You can lock the panel. Now, there's also that HD mode. So that's what I'm in right now. Uh, we talked about it in other videos, the HD mode versus the SD or standard mode. So the standard mode is going to give you a maximum channel count of 10 channels. It's going to give you a latency of 2.8 milliseconds. So that's great for performance applications. For commercial applications, if you need more channels, that high density mode is going to give you 20 channels, but the latency is going to go up just a little bit to 6.7 milliseconds. So this is where you would change that. And then here's another kind of neat feature. You have an output mix. You can be either discrete individual outputs or a mixed output. Now, on the very back of the receiver, you'll see that there's actually four XLRs for each of those four outputs and in high density mode, you know, labeled one, two, three, and four. And I don't know how well you can see this, but four also says four slash mix. So if I go into the output mix and change it from discrete to mixed, now I can change the levels of all of these four different channels and mix them down to just that one output. So if you have an application where you really need to save channels, you can actually use this as a manual mixer internally to mix those channels down to a single one. So that, that's a, 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 a neat little thing that we added to it. Um, but this is the overall system things. Now, where you really start getting into things is when you get into the channel. And so in the channel settings here, you actually have the ability to do a lot of different things from change the ID name of it, which we've just labeled here, simple A1, B1. Um, it's an alphanumeric two characters, so you can name it whatever you want. You can change the gain, which is actually the mic preamp gain, which in, within each of the transmitters. And you even have, like, for example, input here, this first one, and you can see by the icon that it's the belt pack. This first one could be either mic or instrument, remembering that this can be used for a performance situation. So you could actually have an instrument connected to this and actually use it for bass guitar, which it does extraordinarily well at because it doesn't have uh, that compression that you often run into, especially when you're talking about, you know, analog UHF wireless. It's the one thing that bass players, you know, often complain about is losing their dynamics. You won't have that problem here. That's a side note from me because I'm a bass player, but that's how that works. Um, you also have a mute mode, and that mute mode, you can enable or disable it. So if you've got uh, a handheld in the hands of somebody who is unskilled, they don't know audio, perhaps it's for children uh, in a middle school or something like that, you can actually disable that mute switch so that it's on all the time. So you do have that option. Now, when you're talking about the tabletop ones, your, your gooseneck and, and boundary, you actually have your toggle mode. So you can do toggle, uh, which is toggle on and off. You can do press to talk, press to mute, or again, even disable that one. So all of these things are changed in real time too, by the way. So this is making the changes over the air so that, you know, if you're in a room setting things up, 
then you want to make these changes, like for example, to the gain, and you want to hear how it's going, you can do it all live. Um, also, that, like I said, the LEDs, you can turn them on or off if you don't want them there, and the battery type, which you need to set in order to make sure your calculations for remaining battery life is good. Um, Timeout is one of those things, and this was from request voice of customer kind of thing. So what had happened with the previous system, with System 10, if you took a System 10 transmitter out of range from the receiver for more than five minutes, the transmitter would actually shut off. And the difficulty there was if some people were doing, for example, a play, and they'd go backstage outside of signal range for, for a minute, they'd come back, they'd have to turn the transmitter back on again. And that's something that, that caused a little bit of difficulty for people. So we put this time out here so that you can change that time to a minute, 10 minutes, even an hour, or off, really, so that it never times out. That way it'll actually reconnect just by walking back in the room, except for having, uh, except instead of having to turn the transmitter on and off. Now each channel also has some utilities to it. So one of them is an EQ. And this is a four band parametric EQ. It's got a lot of ability to control things. You also have the ability to store, create and store and recall different presets. And, and AT has included a few very uh, general uh, EQ settings in here. But as you can see, this is a fully parametric EQ and you have a lot of control over that. Now, also, if I scroll down here, you have a full compressor limiter here for that channel. So you even got metering for input level, gain reduction, output level. All of that is very easy to access and control all of these things. And again, like I said, these are real-time changes so that you can actually listen to the changes that you're doing here. So this gives you a lot of power between the compressors and limiters and EQ and that manual mixing to really make this system sound good and in reality without having to get too crazy on an external DSP. Now this last tab I wanted to show you briefly for a couple of reasons. One, you know, the, the really technical ones of you out there are going to ask about, what about the network? What can we do on that? Well, obviously, you can see here, you've got your IP settings. You can set it on auto or static, however you wish to do it. But the next section is a little bit more important, I think, the remote control portion. And that's something that you will not find in any kind of wireless at this price point anywhere. And that's the ability to monitor and control this system remotely. Now, the API for this is open. And we actually have uh, plugins for QSYS and working with many other manufacturers so that we could remotely manage these. So what's the use case there? So the use case is I've got my gooseneck microphone that belongs to the CEO. It's sitting in the CEO's position. And when the CEO mutes that microphone, they want it so that it mutes all the microphones. Well, you can strip that data off on the network, that mute command that has gone out to go to another DSP, to go to QSYS or go to Crestron, and then actually return information to mute all of the mics and turn all of the mics red. So this allows a lot of remote control, which is necessary, especially for large scale meetings like that. Now, from the monitoring standpoint, I'm going to go ahead and close this and go in. This is our software. You can see on the monitor page, and I have this alert, which is just telling me I've muted and unmuted. You can see on the monitor page, there's a lot of data that we can get. So you can see the transmitter type by the little icons. You can see what their battery level is. You can see the gain uh, level, you've got a little bit more gain on the belt pack than the handheld. You can also see, you know, when I hit mute, you can see that mute indication go on and off. Um, also, you see your RF level down here, so you know that you have a nice strong RF link. And then finally, uh, you have down here at the bottom, and I'll unmute this mic so you can see it, you can see your, your audio level as well, so you have metering for that. So this there's a great deal of power built into this system um, that, like I said before, is just not available in systems at this price point. So the ability to remote control them, the DSP that's built inside of them, the ability to survive in a 2.4 gigahertz wireless environment, which is another video we have that talks about that. Um, so overall, System 20 Pro is just miles ahead of what System 10 Pro was. And it's available now. And like I said, a uh, great deal of control for the cost. Thank you.